Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 87. If you want to download this workbook for chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, in this video, we're going to look at a cost savings example. So far, we've been in this chapter, chapter 9, we're estimating cash flows for our net present value calculation. But all of the examples have been a sales example, like we have a new product. But here, what about when we get some equipment? We buy some equipment for, or we're thinking about buying equipment that costs 520000 and it's going to save us money because it's much more efficient than some other process we're currently using. So this is a cost saving example as opposed to a sale example. Both are net marginal, have net marginal benefits. All right, so here's the assumptions. We have 520,000. We're going to depreciate it over five years. Even though we've done makers in the last couple examples, which is the more relevant, we're going to keep it simple in this one. Straight line down to zero. That would make our depreciation cost minus salvage divided by number of years. So down to zero. 100 so that's our annual depreciation. We'll need that over here for our operating cash flows. Sell price at the end of the life will be $40,000. We'll have to do a calculation, take into consideration the tax implications of that. Since we're uh, straight line down to zero, the book value will be zero. So we'll have to look at the tax implication of that. Again, makers is the more relevant one, but we're keeping it simple. Pre-taxed cost savings. This is like a cash in because it's a savings, right? We always look at the marginal uh, differences, the incremental cash flow. And we're comparing cash flows with this project for the firm and without. Without this project, we would be spending 160,000 uh, on normal operations, the normal cost. When we get the um, new machine, the, these are the savings. So this is the incremental cash flow we'll analyze. Um, net working capital. Oh, but wait a second. It says reduce net working capital. Yeah, with a more efficient system, we've estimated that this will actually reduce our net working capital requirements. So it's actually in time zero going to be included not as a negative, but as a positive. Our tax rate is point. 3, 5, and we have a required rate of return of 12.5%. Those are our assumptions. Let's go ahead and calculate our operating cash flow for periods 1 through 5. Now we're going to use the taxed shield method here for uh, uh, calculating operating cash flows. We saw a couple videos ago uh, we were doing the full pro forma income statements, but in the couple video goes I showed you briefly that, that this is an option and it gives you the exact same calculation if we did the pro forma income statement. So tax shield, we're simply going to take all of our revenues and expenses. Oh, but for us we just have savings which are like an incoming cash flow to us. So there we have it. Now we have to multiply that times 1 minus our tax rate. So every $1 of benefit, we're going to have to subtract out our taxes, which is 35 cents on the dollar. Now think about this. What happened? Before we had the project, we had $160,000 worth of expenses we were putting on our tax return, right? And anytime you have an expense or a deduction on your tax return, it saves you paying taxes. But here, we're saving this. So now this deduction will not be on our tax return anymore. So of course, it's like we're having to pay taxes on it. And in fact, we will because that deduction won't be there. Now that is the uh, one minus the tax, but we have to consider for cash flow depreciation. And the tax shield um, method explicitly says, hey, I'm going to take my depreciation, and since I know that's a non-cash expense that has a tax benefit, the taxes I'm going to save are those right there. Whatever that is, times that. And that's the tax shield method of getting at operating cash flows, which are particularly good for cost savings examples. Now, I need to lock this, so I'm going to hit the F4, and lock this, I'm going to hit the F4, and also this one also. And it looks like this one also. I forgot all of them. 
All of these, as we copy this down, need to be locked. Control Enter and double click and send it down. Now, in networking capital, it is going to be positive. Um, we're reducing our networking capital. So at the beginning of this project, in fact, it'll be a positive cash flow. At the end, if the since the project is going to close down, we'll have to take it as a minus here. Remember, this is uh, reducing networking capital, but it, when the project ends, it has to go back up to normal. At least we're going to assume that. So it's a subtraction at the end, positive at time zero. That's the opposite of the way we were doing it when we had uh, sales examples. Capital spending going to be a negative. And then the selling price. OK, so at the end, we're going to have the selling price of 40000 We compare it to the uh, book value of 0. So we have to take it in consideration cash. OK, so that's the cash coming into us when we sell it. But we're paying taxes. So we're going to do our same times 1 minus our tax rate. That gives us the effective cash flow in. All the cash in, some of the taxes out. 26,000. Now we can add all of our cash flows. Copy it down. And now we can do our net present value calculation, our required rate of return, our values, time one to whatever the last time is, and then subtract out our cost, which is listed as a negative there, or whatever the uh, time zero cash flow is. So there it is. We have a net present value positive. That means we should probably look at our estimations and uh, make sure that they're reasonable. And uh, then it's a go. I'm going to do my IRR also, cash flows times zero. And we can see, oh yeah, look, our IRR has to be, if this is positive, has to be bigger than our required rate of return. All right, that is a cost-saving example. Uh, in our next video, we'll look at scenario analysis to help us uh, spread out the numbers uh, for our net present value. See you next video.